Okay, so um, again, guys, I'm going to record a short video here talking about it. I've had a couple kids ask questions on 3, 4, and 3, 5. Again, that's fine. I'm trying to get a Zoom meeting set up for tomorrow. I really hope you guys are referring to these videos on my website um, and making sure that you're doing your part in trying to figure things out while I'm not there. Again, I would much rather be there in person doing this. It's difficult for everybody. Uh, but while I'm here, we're going to have to do our best to kind of adapt to those situations. We talked about it at the beginning of the year, what the process is if we can't be there in person. Again, hopefully this is the only time we have to do it. Hopefully we don't have to do things like this nonstop. It's awful, I know. But we have to make sure that we're doing our part and trying to figure out things um, through any means necessary. So again, uh, for those of you guys that are struggling with 3-4 in geometry, we're talking about finding the closest distance from a point to a given line to start the lesson off with. So example one is simply just saying, if I have a point not on a line, what's the distance between that point and that line? Now, obviously with the distance there, you guys are gonna have to refer back to your notes on the distance formula. You can Google it, it's in your notes from chapter one. We used it a ton. We tested over it, we did all kinds of stuff with it, but that's what you're using in the first example. So here, your job is to know that the distance from a point to a line, the closest, the shortest distance, is that straight perpendicular line. So we don't really want to find the distance from A to B or A to D, we want to find the distance from A to C. You have to use the distance formula, so that's what they did there follow the directions in the book. It might tell you to round, it might tell you to leave it um, underneath the radical symbol. So some of you guys might be having issues with that. So on this one, in this example, you would wanna find the distance from E to G. That's the perpendicular line. So if you were to find the distance between E and G, you should get about 7.1 units, okay? If you didn't get 7.1, you probably did something wrong in the distance formula, so double check that. Okay, the next thing is construction. Don't worry about that. If you guys are getting that problem wrong in the homework where it's talking about constructing, that's fine. I'm not concerned about that. Just make sure that you um, understand the content for the lesson. Okay, other than that, we're not gonna test over construction. Like I said, I'm gonna give you guys stuff uh, later on in the year for that. Perpendicular bisector. Again, you guys already know what this is. We've seen it before. It's just trying to show you how to construct one. So don't worry about the constructing. We'll skip over that. If you get that one wrong in the homework, it's not a big deal. Okay. I don't know if I took that out or not, but I'll have to make sure I take it out for next year. The three theorems in this lesson, 310, 311, and 312. The first one is just saying if you have a line intersecting another line, and the two angles on either side are congruent, that has to be perpendicular. They both have to be 90. There's no other way for that to happen. 311 is saying if you have a plane in a transversal through two parallel lines, if the transversal is perpendicular to one, it must be perpendicular to the other. We kind of already talked about that earlier this, uh, this chapter. And again, the, the 312 guys is almost saying the same thing. If you have two perpendicular lines to the same transversal, those lines have to be parallel. That's all that's saying. Um, they're, they're almost the same thing. It's not the converse, but it's almost the converse. So uh, keep that in mind. Don't worry about this proof. Um, and again, we should be able to identify which lines are parallel and perpendicular. Given an image, that should be okay. Uh, and the homework. So as far as the homework goes, guys, I, I had some people say tracing and constructing. If you're getting the construction problems wrong, don't worry about it, okay? I'm not going to grade those against you. It's not a big deal, okay? As far as the other ones go for distance, make sure on the distance formula problems, if you're having trouble with these, make sure you're paying attention to stuff. So this one we should be okay with. Um, linear pair perpendicular theorem, we can pull that up tomorrow in the Zoom meeting, but just pay attention to what you're putting. I'm guessing you're going to use some of those properties from the first three sections in this. I want to kind of move on. Like I said, we'll talk about proofs tomorrow in class if we can set up that Zoom. If not, guys, be more specific. Email me which ones you want to see me make a video of, and we can make a video. But right now, I just want to talk about the lessons in general 
That way we can kind of have a better idea when we attack the homework because I think we're having a hard time understanding things. Now, if you're struggling with 3.5, I want to tell you guys right now, this is stuff from last year. Okay, this directed line segment is something new, but all the stuff that you're going to have trouble with is stuff that we should have got last year. Now, the directive, directed line segment is kind of a challenging thing. I think I put one on your test as a bonus question because it's kind of a tricky deal. But what it's saying is, is we have a segment where it's giving us a direction. So if it says, find the coordinates of point P along the line so that segment AB is a ratio of AP to PB is 3 to 2. What we have to do for this 3 to 2 is figure out how many equal parts we just split this segment into. Now, when it says 3 to 2, I understand you guys are thinking that fraction, but we just split this segment into five parts. Three parts are AP, two parts are PB. So we have to take our, our segment and we have to split it into five equal parts like this direction says. Okay, once we do that, we need to find the slope and then use our slope and take it times take it times our fraction so that we can figure out how far along that line we need to add the points for a a um, a's x value and a's um, y value so here's what they did they split it into five equal parts they said the part for ap is three fifths then they found the slope is six over three which is just two so what we did is we took the slope of uh, 6 over 3 and we had an internet connection issue there so they found that rise's change was 6 the runs change was 3 this value here for the rise they multiplied by 6 so they took 3 fifths because that's what part a was times 6 which is 3.6 and then they took that value 3.6 and they added it to the y coordinate so if I take 2 plus 3.6 I get 5.6 they also took the run of the slope, so we didn't reduce it down to the 2 like I said earlier. They just left it 6 over 3, which is what you have to do. So we took our run of 3 times 3 fifths, and you got 1.8. They took the x coordinate, and they added 1.8. That's how they got 4.8. So on a directed line segment, and again, like I said, guys, I'll show you more of those. But if you're having a hard time with those, just keep in mind, we want to figure out how many equal parts and then how far along that we're going. So you're going to need the three-fifths, that initial fraction, and then you're going to have to find the slope of your line. We'll probably go over some of those together in class tomorrow. But just for a heads up for this one, if I were to do that directed line segment like this, AP to PB, it's saying four to one here. So for this one, I would take instead of three over five, this one has five parts as well for four to one, but I would take four over five, times whatever my slope is. Again, slope formula is right here. It's rise over run. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So if I do the y2 minus y1 here, I get 4 minus 3 is 1. That's my rise. 8 minus 1 is 7. That's my run. So my rise is 1. I'm going to take 1 times 4 fifths, and I'm going to add that value to 3. It should be a super small decimal. And then I'm going to take 7 times 4 fifths, and I'm going to add that to 1 because we're going from A to B. Okay, so when you do that, you should get 6.6 .6 and 3.8. Okay, so you're going to end up taking that 7 times 4 fifths, and you're going to end up getting 5.6 plus 1 is 6.6. .6. You're going to take 1 times 4 fifths and get 0.8. That's how they got 3.8. Okay, so that's how they did that one, and I'll show you a worked out solution on that one. That one is tough, but here's the stuff that I, hopefully you guys are not having a problem with this stuff as much. Okay, we know that the slopes of lines that are parallel have to be the same. We've learned in the past, and this should be a good refresher, that the slopes of perpendicular lines are negative reciprocals. This is just saying these are the same. If you multiply something by its negative reciprocal, you should get negative one. But identifying parallel and perpendicular lines, all you guys need to do on all of these like this is a slope formula. Once you find the slope, like it shows here, you should be able to tell, okay, one third doesn't have a shared slope. B and C are both one half, so those are parallel. And then the negative reciprocal of one half is negative two over one. So 
D is perpendicular to B and C. Okay, and then you guys have an example of that right there. Here's the one that I feel like you guys might be having more trouble with, and I'm going to walk you through it real quick. So it says write an equation of a line passing through a point that is parallel. All you need from this equation is your slope. That's it. So once you know what your slope is, you're going to write y equals mx plus b. You know your slope has to be 2. They plugged that in, and we know it has to pass through the point negative 1 comma 1. So they plug in negative 1 for x and 1 for y, and then they solve for b. Once I have my y-intercept, I can write an equation of a line just like this. The process is exactly the same for perpendicular, except for once we identify our slope, so in this case, our slope was negative 2 when we isolated the y value. So we have to change the sign and flip the fraction and then do the problem exactly the same way. So I know my slope has to be 1 half. I'm going to take the coordinate point given. The y value is 3. The x value is 2. The y value is 3. The x value is 2. Plug it in. Solve for b. And now I can write the equation of a line. So here's the equation of the line right there. Okay, this is all 100% review from Algebra 1, but if we follow these directions here, we should have a good refresher on how to do it. Like I said, I'm going to get, uh, hopefully get it set up so that we can Zoom call tomorrow, but don't get overwhelmed and give up on these guys because it shouldn't be something that we can't accomplish. Um, and like I said, I would much rather be there. I'm not, I'm not mad at you um, by any means for not understanding this, so don't misinterpret it, but understand We've got to kind of do a better job of communicating questions so that I can constructively answer them. Um, some of you guys are sending me stuff like, we don't get it. Okay, I know, like, if you don't understand it, that's fine, but please be more specific. I didn't understand how they got this in example two, or um, I don't know how to do this section of problems. Uh, just saying we don't get it, I can't help you out a whole lot with that, so please make sure... Uh, you're doing your best to communicate with me your struggles, and hopefully I can help you guys out. Um, again, like I said, it's frustrating for everyone doing it this way, but hopefully this video helps you guys out a little bit. Um, on 3 through 5, or 3 through 6, when you guys are doing those, keep in mind we want to find the parts first. So this one is 1 to 4. I'll help you out on 3 real quick. It's 1 to 4, so it's going to be 1 fifth that you multiply by your slope. On this one, it looks like your slope is going to be negative 2 over 3 minus 8 is negative 5. So negative 2 times 1 fifth and then negative 5 times 1 fifth. And you're going to add those negatives to that A value because you're going from A to B. Okay, so make sure you guys are doing it in that way. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to get the right numbers. Watch your signs as well because you're multiplying by a negative. You're going to be subtracting. Your P should be less than both of those values. You're subtracting from both of those. Thanks again, guys, for your patience. Keep working hard. I appreciate you guys. Have a good one.